Hello there, I'm Rachel with the Charlotte Mason Plenary. Today we're going to start our series on plenary pointers. These are quick little tips to help you get started implementing the Charlotte Mason method in your home. And our first plenary pointer is going to be prepping the lesson. So prepping the lesson can go a long way in helping your student narrate better. We're going to do a little example today and I'm using this book, America First by Lawton Evans. It is my favorite American history spine. My daughter used it for her Form 1 history spine. And the first thing you want to do when you go to prep a lesson is to review the previous reading. So today we're going to use the example of Chapter 34, Paul Revere's Ride, as our reading. But remember, we want to review the previous chapter, and in this case it's all about Patrick Henry. So you would, uh, first of all, ask your student what they remember and just discuss it a little bit. If they don't remember anything, that's okay. You just simply recap it for them. It'll be all right. Um, and this step should take no more than one to two minutes. Then you want to move on to step two. Step two is to introduce the new reading. And this part has three components. First, you want to introduce the new people or new characters in the reading. So who will your student be meeting in this new chapter? You want to help her feel familiar with the characters and the people in her books, bring them to life, make them friends. So for example, in this chapter, I would tell my daughter, in, in this reading, you are going to meet Paul Revere, and he was part of the American Revolution. And you're also going to meet Samuel Adams and John Hancock. Now, they all lived in Boston. And I would ask her, do you remember where Boston is? And if she didn't, then we would probably go look at a map. Now this reading also contains the nearby towns of Lexington and Concord, so you would also point those out in relation to Boston, and you might want to show where Paul Revere rode from one point to the other. The next step is to offer a few vocabulary words, but not too many. You don't want to overwhelm your student with lots of new vocabulary words. You just want to pick out maybe two or three that they wouldn't understand from the context of the reading. And one of the ones you can see here, I have circled the word stores. The sentences, the regulars are on their way to capture the stores in the warehouse. Now my student would probably think that was like a grocery store or a place you went to shop, but I would need to explain that that's actually talking about ammunition. All right, so that's it for step two, but here's another tip for prepping the lesson. All of those proper names and places, you can always write them down on a whiteboard for your student to refer to during her narration. It's very, very helpful, and that way they can refer to all of the proper names, and they don't have to remember everybody's name from the reading. Um, you can also have older students write it down in a notebook for themselves, and the other thing is that it really helps students get a visual for the new vocabulary words. So step three is simply to read the chapter, and step four is narration. Let your student tell you about all the wonderful connections that she made to the reading. You always want to encourage a new narrator. Don't ask questions and don't prompt. This, that's not the time for this. We're going to get to that in the next step. And if you need help with narration, you can always go see my plenary pointer about narration on the website. And the last step is my favorite one, is to discuss the reading, and this is what we call the grand discussion. This is where you get to ask your student open-ended questions about the reading. Open-ended questions only. This is not a quiz to see what they remember or what they don't remember. This is an opportunity to help your student think about the big ideas that she confronted in the reading. Ideas with Paul Revere's ride about liberty and revolution and freedom. Now, this grand discussion thing may not happen with every reading, especially with younger students. It takes time, and I remember with my daughter, it actually took about two years before we had a grand discussion because they need to think about the readings and sometimes ruminate on them and, and it also doesn't always happen right after the reading sometimes it'll happen later that day or even later in the week that's what happened with my daughter It was actually about a week later after she had done a reading that she asked me a question about the reading and I went yay grand discussion time now examples of open-ended questions include why do you think the character decided to do that? Or what would have happened if he chose differently? And what would you have done? 
And do you think the choice was a good choice or a bad choice? And that's it. Parts 1 and 2 help the brain to focus, and parts 3 and 4 help the brain to store the information in long-term memory. Now, narration should be a delight for both you and your student, so let's help the student by prepping the lesson. I've created a checklist for you with all of these steps, and you can download it right over here on the Plenary website, so just click that little link. Now, please, also, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that little bell that gives you notifications so that you get notifications about every new plenary pointer. And also please leave a comment either here or over in the Facebook group because I'd love to chat with you. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to chat with you soon.